we're at a real turning point in the spinal cord injury field where we move from treatments on rats to treatments on humans. Just in the last few years, we've seen three different treatments from my laboratory move towards the clinic, two of them into the clinic. The first one involved a modulation of the immune system, where instead of spinal cord injury causing an immune response that then increases the size of the injury site, we can actually abate that secondary degenerative process and stop that immune response largely, such that the patient's left with cubic inches of tissue prospectively in a rat quite a bit less, but enough tissue for the animal or prospectively the human to, uh, to operate, to, to function, make their legs move, their arms move, bladder, bowel, sexual function improvements. We've seen this treatment move from phase one clinical trials to phase two clinical trials with success. And now Bristol-Myers Squibb is running with this program. In the fields of rheumatoid arthritis and ulcerative colitis, what I see is stepping stones towards treatments towards spinal cord injury. Our second treatment for spinal cord injury used a stem cell population and made a spinal cord treatment that involved wrapping the wires or axons of your spinal cord with an insulator, like an insulator in an in a, in electrical circuit in a wall. By restoring this electrical conductivity to the spinal cord, we've resulted in tremendous gains to animals. And I'm really, really pleased to say that we were just granted approval by the FDA to begin testing this product in humans. And that's going to be sponsored by Geron Corporation. And then more recently, we've developed a treatment for chronic spinal cord injury, maybe. Looks like it's working in animal models. We're going to move that into the human population, first in deficits, diseases of motor neurons, as a way to move towards chronic spinal cord injury treatments in replacing motor neurons to those humans. We're at a point where we've developed the FDA application to begin working in humans, and we're going to submit that pretty imminently. The first and the second human embryonic stem cell based treatments in the world. Uh, we've got a lot of hope about moving from rats into humans, translating from the bench to the bedside, and we've got some tricks up our sleeves we're going to keep pushing until we get there. We have um, begun to work with Berkeley Bionics, who has been kind enough to show us tonight uh, a prototype. So this device is going to be ready for launch in a limited capacity to rehab institutes in about 12 months, roughly. And what we're doing is working with Berkeley Bionics in my laboratory at UCI in order to um, work out tweaks, work out kinks, make sure it's safe in the, in the patient population. We're working together in an iterative process, and right now we're just um, uh, getting ready with it. But look what we get to work with. So this is Amanda who's apparently walking in front of me. <laughs>